check name to make sure it finds it. Okay. And now the routing group has been added. By default, when you add users and groups, they get the read permission. Now the read permission consists of three permissions. Execute, list, and read. These three together actually give a user or a group the ability to read. So by default, any user or group that's added gets read. But now we want this, we want the routing group to be able to open files and change them, but not delete any files. So the permission that we need to add there is write. So we added write. So they can read and open files. They can write the files and change them, but they cannot delete files, which is what modify provides in full control, remember, was um, adding permissions. So we'll click on apply and OK. Whoop. And then OK. And now the routing group has been added with the change permissions. OK, so now we've added two groups. We've added the achievers and the rowdy. Now let's add a couple of user accounts to see how that would happen. Okay, first of all, let's add Billy. Now Billy has a domain user account, so we have to make sure we're looking in the domain. So let's give Billy only the read write. So we'll click on permissions, we'll click on add. Remember, we're looking for a user account this time on the DRLAN domain, and we're going to type in Billy. Check name, found Billy on the DRLAN domain. Billy's user account now, Billy's now part of a group, so Billy's user account has been added here, and by default, he gets read share permissions. So that's what we want Billy to have is read only. He can read and open documents, but he can't edit them or change them, and he cannot delete them or do anything else on the data share. Click Apply and OK. Apply and OK. So we've configured our share permissions. Now let's configure the NTFS permissions. We're going to click on Edit, Add. Again, we're going to type in Billy. Billy is there. We've added Billy. And by default, again, the read, the three read permissions have been added. So we know that Billy has the ability to read folders in our data share. Again, I'll click on Apply. And now Billy has read permissions, NTFS permissions, and the read permissions on our share tab. Let's do one more user. Let's, time, let's pick another user account, but let's make it a local user account. Let's make it Charlie. We know Charlie has a local username and password, local user account on this Win7 computer. So we're going to click on Advanced again. We always start with Share Permissions. Click on Permissions. Click on our Add button. Now remember, we're looking for a user account, but we don't want this utility to look in the LAN. We want to change this to the Win7 computer. Click OK. And now we're going to type in Charlie. And our utility will look into the local users and groups. Click on Check Name. Again, Charlie has an account on the Win7 computer. We'll click OK. And let's make it so that Charlie is denied access. We want to make sure Charlie is denied to this folder. We want Charlie to never be able to get into this folder. So we'll click Give Him the Deny permission. Click on Apply. Now, one of the things about the Deny permission is the deny permission overwrites every other permission on the network. Even the administrator, if he's given the deny permissions on a folder or a file, he cannot get into that folder. Now, of course, there's ways for administrators to take ownership and recover files that they've been denied to. But the deny permission, you have to be very careful because it's very powerful and overwrites every other permission. So this little warning is telling us that. We'll click yes, that I definitely want to give Charlie our deny permission. We'll click OK, apply and OK. So now Charlie has the deny share permissions. Let's go ahead and modify his NTFS permissions. We'll click on edit, add. Again, we have to change the location to the local computer. Now we add Charlie. And again, we're going to give him the deny permission and apply. We get the warning again, we'll say yes, and I click continue, and Charlie now has the deny permission. So we've set up both NTFS and share permissions. I have to click continue. We've set up share permissions and NTFS permissions now for two different domain groups, 
one domain user account and one local user account. Now let's go ahead and review what we've done here on our data folder that we've shared. Okay. We've added the Achievers group, and the Achievers group, which included the White Hat account, now has full control share permissions, has the modify permissions under the NTFS permissions, and of course, with full and modified, we know that they cannot, that the White Hat account now cannot change permissions and give other users and groups permissions in this folder. We also added the Rowdy group, and we gave the Rowdy group change share permissions and write NTFS permissions. And basically, this gives Black Hat the ability to open, create, and edit files, but Black Hat is not allowed to delete files. And then we added the Billy domain user account. Remember, this was not a local account, it was a domain user account. We added Billy, and we gave Billy share permissions the read share permissions, and then we gave them the three read permissions and the NTFS permissions, read, read, execute, and list, which gives um, Billy effective permissions of read. Then finally, we added Charlie, which is a local account, and we gave Charlie the deny share permission, the deny NTFS permissions, which makes his effective permissions, his overall permissions, deny. Now I think you can see that when we're setting up share permissions and NTF permissions, sometimes this can get kind of confusing, especially when we're trying to determine the total permissions or the effective permissions for a user or group. Now there's some rules that we can use to determine our effective permissions. So let's look at some examples and apply the rules that help us determine what the effective permissions are for our users and our groups. Now here are some examples. Under the Share tab, we have the Billy user account. And under the Share tab, Billy has the full permission. He has full change and read. Under the Security tab, which is our NTFS permissions, Billy's account has our read permissions, which we remember is read execute, read list, and read. Okay. So how do we figure out Billy's effective permissions if he has full permissions under the share tab and read permissions under the NTFS tab? Well the way you figure out his effective permissions is that whichever permission is the worst or the most restrictive between these two tabs is the permission he gets. So he has full and read. The worst permission is read, or the most restrictive permission is read. And so his effective permissions for that data share folder is going to be the read permissions. Let's look at another example. Say Billy has read permissions, so he would have just that one checkbox checkbox check is the read checkbox. So Billy has read share permissions under the share tab, and Billy has full permissions under the security tab, which is our full NTFS permissions. Okay, that means all of the checkbox are checked, so he has full permissions. And again, what we, what we do is we compare the permissions of the two tabs, and whichever one are the worst permissions or the most restrictive is the permission he has. And again, read and full, the most restrictive permission is going to be read. So again, Billy's effective permissions in this example is going to be read. Let's look at another example. He has change under the share permissions, full under the NTFS permissions, and the most restrictive would be change. He has change. Okay, again, one more example, full share permissions, modify NTFS permissions, and his um, effective permissions would be modify. Now another scenario that can arrive is when your user account has been assigned to more than one group. And this can cause additional confusion. So let's look at the rules that we apply when we're trying to figure out when your user account has been assigned to more than one group. Now in example one here, you see that we have two groups that have been assigned to the share tab. And we have two groups that have been assigned to the um, security tab. Now 
We can imagine that the white hat account is in the achievers group and the white hat account is in the rowdy group. So white hat, the user, domain user account, is in both groups. And you can see what this could cause some more confusing confusion. And a matter of fact, when you're studying for your Microsoft exams, this is how Microsoft will test you. They will take a user account and put them into two groups, and then you must determine the effective permissions for that particular user. So what are the effective permissions for White Hat? If White Hat is in Achievers and Rowdy, and White Hat is in both of these groups, and those two groups are in both tabs, what are the effective permissions, and how do we determine what White Hat has? Okay. Now if we look, first of all we have to determine the share tab or the share permissions. We know that the Achievers group has read permissions, the Roddy group has change. First of all we figure out the permissions, the effective permissions just for this tab. When we're figuring out the effective permissions for one tab, we take the least restrictive permissions or the best permissions. So if the Achievers group has read, and Rowdy has changed, the best permissions or the least restrictive would be changed. So we know in the share tab, White Hat has the change permission because White Hat is a part of both groups again. Now we go to the security tab and we do the same thing. We take the best permissions or the least restrictive and that's the effective permissions for the security tab or the NTFS permissions. So if achievers have read, Rowdy has full, the best permission is full and now we take the least restrictive, or I'm sorry, the most restrictive or the worst permissions between the two tabs again, just how we did for the user accounts, and that would be the total effective permissions. So the best permission is change, the best permission over under the NTFS tab or the security tab is full, the most restrictive permission between these two tabs is change, and so change is the effective permission for White Hat when he is, his account is part of two groups. Let's look at example two. Okay, Achievers group has read, the Rowdy group has full. We look at the best permissions, the least restrictive permissions, which is the full. So that is the effective permissions for share permissions. Then we t look at the security tab. Achievers have write, Rowdy has read. The best permissions, or the least restrictive, is going to be right. So under the NTFS permissions, White has, has the right permissions. And here, he has the full permissions. And then we take the most restrictive, or the worst permissions, which is our right permission. So effective permissions for the White Hat is going to be right. Let's look at our example three. Example three, achievers have read. Rowdy has change, the best permission is change. Achievers have read under NTFS, Rowdy has full, the best permission is full. Then we compare these two, full and change. We know that the least restrictive, or I'm sorry, the most restrictive, the worst permission is change. So we know that here, in this example, that the white hat account has the change permission. Now again, there's two other rules that you want to keep in mind that I mentioned before. First of all, share permissions, users and groups under the share tab, these permissions do not apply to a user that's logged on locally to the computer. If a user sits down at the computer, at the Win7 computer and logs in, these permissions do not apply at all to that user. Only the NTF permissions, NTFS permissions, apply to locally logged on users and users that access a folder across the network. The other rule that you have to keep in mind is the deny permission. The deny permission overwrites everything. In any of these examples, if the deny permission was used, that deny permission would overwrite and give effect permissions of deny for all users and groups. 